tracks. The system doesn't change much. No, I'm sure they have you know flavors for each guy, but you know that they're just running their offense and um, trying to be efficient, um, utilize their personnel. You know, I know they're banged up, but uh, uh, got a good collection of skill around them, and uh, system in place has been really good uh, for a long time now. Well, freshman running back runs hard. Yeah, 20. He's he's really good. Uh, he's a good player. Very explosive, good instincts, can really accelerate, and he's got good top end speed. Mm -hmm. Coach Jake had maybe his best game on Saturday mm -hmm. night, uh, three tackles for loss. Uh, how, how good is it having him back healthy? Is he finally playing at 100% now? Yeah, he's been practicing you know, a little over a week now and, and came back and had a good week of preparation, got in there. Uh, luckily, we had a good handle on the game, and he got in there and made the most of his opportunity. So he's been practicing well, though. Uh, so it's good to see that uh, happen for him, you know, just moving forward, building confidence, and, and uh, again, continue to build your depth. It's the feeling that Xavier Thomas will be back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. When you watch the, the film of NC State, what you've seen so far, can you tell that the injuries on the offensive line are, are starting to take a little bit of a toll? Uh, they actually play pretty good. Um, uh, they, they play really well. You can tell they're well coached, got a good uh, cohesion and chemistry. The young offensive tackle uh, that they moved in there a couple of games ago is a really talented player and um, uh, very similar to the Becton kid uh, at Louisville, who we got a lot of respect for. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how tall he is. He may not be as tall, but he's massive and uh, really athletic. So, uh, you know, they've done a good job, you know, recruiting and developing their guys. And I know they've got a few guys banged up, but the guys coming in uh, have really done well. You got to talk to him about his mm -hmm. starting football late in high school and things like that. What do you see from him recruiting wise and anything he's developed so far? Well, again, he had to move. And then once he came here, he moved from D end, which he's just starting to kind of get a feel for to D tackle. And, uh, for DNs, and the initial transition isn't always a lot of fun. And uh, so just the game's a little different. Some ways the same, some ways different. So uh, there was a transition there for him and uh, still working on fundamentals and technique. But he's a heavy-handed, twitchy, athletic big guy uh, that plays with a lot of passion. And that's fun to watch, um, easy to coach. Um, and uh, again, he's barely played football. So uh, he's young, just turned 18 uh, not long ago. And uh, so he's a really, really young one. And uh, the sky's the limit for Rook. You know, he's just the biggest thing is stay focused and grind and, and uh, buy in, which he has. He seemed very engaged mm -hmm. and confident uh, for a young guy. What's he like off the field? Uh, he's got a, a good grasp on, he's got a sense of maturity to him and a good grasp on you know, what he wants in life. He was raised up the right way and then had, had come from a program one of the better programs in Detroit. They've done a, a terrific job mentoring and coaching and guiding him and, and his team. He comes from a very good culture. So he was looking for something like Clemson. So uh, he was able to really plug in. And he's a people person. Uh, again, great humility. And, uh, you know, he's a worker. Brent, you spent a lot of time in Oklahoma and, uh, and coaching overall. Mm -hmm. What kind of luxury is it to be in a program where you're able to well, again, I'm just I'm grateful for Coach Sweeney having a philosophy that that um, uh, that that's important. And uh, again, as we've said many times, it's really good in developing your team, obviously, from one year to the next, and it's good for the morale of the team uh, as well, and um, brings a lot of uh, energy. Uh, to practices and meetings and certainly to game day uh, when you're able to play you know more guys and uh, some weeks you, you're afforded to, to play a lot and in some weeks uh, the opportunity just isn't there so when you get those opportunities you want to really take advantage of it. You talk about developing guys, mm -hmm. can you kind of walk through your evolution with Isaiah from the time you first kind of saw some high school tape on him to the player he's become now? Well. I mean, he came in as a runner and a hitter, and uh, not a lot of strength. Um, long and it's kind of like Bambi, and uh, ton of energy. Um, 
very willing. And uh, we almost played him that first year. And we're going to put him in that dime package, you know, as our, our dime backer. And uh, we decided against it and redshirted him and just thinking about the longevity of his career. And then played safety you know, in a backup role. Uh, but I'm not sure how many snaps he had as the redshirt freshman, but played, uh, was a, co a good contributor. And then, um, you know, losing Dorian, we knew we had to we had to make the move in the out of season. And uh, it was really good. Um, some ways easy, you know, as far as his skill set and his length and his toughness and his willingness to tackle. And then others, he just had to refine his, his skills and really understanding of the position and then how it fits into, you know, the whole defense. And last year, he's just trying to figure out how to get lined up where he put his eyes and, and, and then the techniques that go with both coverage and pressure, uh, man, zone, all of those things. And it, it was some really, really good stuff and a few bad plays here and there. And uh, that's part of the growth, a uh, little inconsistency, and then really caught on right at the end of the year last year. Uh, he really took off. I think it, you know, some of it was learning through failure, and some of it was I need to focus a little more on the details of my position. And when he did that, you know, he had great results. And then this year, uh, you know, he took a lot of time in the out of season to really study the totality, the big picture, and again, the, the whole defense and uh, to really have a good understanding of his position. And, and I think you're seeing the results of that. We talk a lot about sort of diamonds in the rough on the recruiting trail. I don't mm -hmm. know how many of them there actually are anymore, but he seems like he sort of fits that mold. And yeah. You saw, some, you saw some things and then really well, you know, I, into something else. And I don't know so much as, you know, uh, if we saw other than a big, long, rangy guy that could run, that was smart, that was tough, that come from a good program and a, a great family. And once you checked all those boxes, uh, I was really trying to talk him into coming. You know, we were in a state of desperation, of panic, if you will, you know, in the re recruiting process, having lost five guys early uh, that were giving up their graduation in our back seven and um, uh, really our secondary. And uh, so we were kind of a victim of circumstance to a certain degree. But, you know, I, had he gone to a bunch of camps and stuff, uh, some of those competitions that they have to rate guys, you know, I think, I think, you know, he would have been noticed a lot more and they'll be talked about a lot more. So I wouldn't try to give us too much credit, you know, with that. When you see him in person, you're like, are you kidding me? You know, uh, it really was just a matter of trying to talk him into coming, you know, from there. So I really didn't think we'd have a, a great chance just because his family's so close. And, uh, but fortunate for us, they were looking for the right things. And I found him here at Clemson. He was. He and Travis were talking after the game. I mm -hmm. think they tied one to one in racing. Um, do you know? I don't know if you know or not. But is he one of the fastest guys? Yeah, he's one of the fastest guys. Yeah, he's usually one of the fastest guys on the field. So he's he's got great top end speed. Yeah, the same Woods, Xavier Kelly. What's up with Xavier? good you know he's gotten a lot better you know we moved him from dn to d tackle so there's a, a process involved but xavier's bought in he's wor really worked hard and went through his, has his shoulder uh, banged up a little bit right now and fought through a little bit last week but uh he's got in there he's done pretty well so uh, xavier's done a nice job with root do you remember um, just what stood out about him to where he hadn't played a lot of football but you guys Kind of saw what he could do. Yeah, just a big, athletic, twitchy guy. And then you see his transcripts, good grades, and, and the coaches can't say enough great things about him. And then you really liked him when they find out he's hardly played. And uh, again, got a great frame and a uh, super good family. And, uh, you know, again, he, he made a lot of plays, you know, when he didn't know what he was doing. So, uh, you know, we were, again, having the situation we had, you know, with D. Lyman. Uh, a mass exodus, you know, we were looking high and low, you know, for, for D lineman, so willing to go anywhere. Dorian was a mm -hmm. guy y'all didn't have to sub for, depending on, on the mm -hmm. situation. How much of a luxury is it at that position to go this long? No, it's great. Yeah, it's great. You know, nothing, you know, you can always, as long as they're subbing and situationally, you know, to, to sub your, you know, your, one player for another, but that's that's not easy to do. You get 85 scholarships, and to have somebody that have that kind of versatility um, is is hard to find, you know. So it's a great luxury. 
and um, uh, the more they play, the better they'll be. And, and uh, it certainly has helped Isaiah too in his in his growth, being able to uh, learn how to play, you know, versus big people, uh, versus the option, you know, versus the spread, all of it. Kayvon has had an interception against NC State all three meetings. Uh, you said last year he, he really gets up for that game because they didn't recruit him. Does he ever talk to you about that, getting particularly no. excited for them? No. You know, he's got a good story, but uh, you could be honest, you could care less about that. But whatever gets him ready, it's good. I didn't know that. He's one of the guys that, he, when you're going into the season, one of the guys you're expecting big things from, and it really fulfilled the promise. Yeah, absolutely. He's a you know he's a fourth year senior. He's played a lot of football. He's very invested. Uh, one of the smartest guys we have on defense. A very natural football player. Got really good instincts and good understanding of the game and uh, can play multiple positions as well. But uh, he also values the leadership role that he's in. He's really grown up a lot uh, since he's been here. And uh, he has been one of our best leaders. Yeah. Coach, every year about this time, your name is going to pop up. How do you handle that? How do you deal with it? I just don't, you know. We're you know, just getting ready for NC State, so there's nothing to handle, to be honest with you. Anybody else? All right, thank you. All right, got it.